Okay, so what we have here is something a little bit different. I happen to find evidence and photographs of an exhibition in San Francisco that I hadn't currently been aware of that occurred in 1894 called the Midsummer Exhibition. Now, just like you, perhaps, I'm completely surprised that I hadn't heard about this before. So I was able to find some photographs and they're a little dodgy, a little sketchy, kind of weird color tone to some of them for some reason. Not exactly sure why. But regardless, the first image here is a pamphlet or a magazine. I think it's some type of weird magazine called The Wasp. And the thing that's of particular interest is down here it says The Awakening. California. It's not a mere dream after all. This midwinter fair is an actual fact. So I thought that was kind of strange. Just in the sense that we have these rumors or we have these different uh, maps that show California as sort of an island or shaped a little bit different. But anyways, that's besides the point. It could simply have something to do with the fact that the people on the east coast of the United States hadn't seen California, had heard rumors of it, still even in 1894 it might have seemed like some type of dream or fantasy to a lot of people in the country, so I guess that would be the official explanation on that as to why it was worded that way. But regardless, the awakening, that's kind of weird, um, just in the sense that that's something that's kind of thrown about around a lot these days, uh, different uh, circles. So anyways, it's, you know, just another one of uh, these things. You know. One of these, uh, whatever the hell that is. And we got these down here, these uh, birds, waterfowl, geese, or ducks or something. And then, uh, I don't even know where this is. This was supposed to be in Golden Gate Park, where this, that's the other weird thing about this exhibition, is that it took place in Golden Gate Park. Uh, I've never heard of it. Um, so I don't even know what part of the park this is. I don't know what the lay of the land was, what the topography was in 1894. So, anyways, moving on. This is a kind of a better idea of what was going on, I guess, right? So, you have here kind of a, a smaller exhibition, but an exhibition nonetheless. And, of course, you see the domes, and, you know, kind of antiquitech or some type of you know energy transference kind of thing going on there and the statues once again these photos the best I could find I was uh, looking all over and this is actually the best I could find um, then we have the people walking around inheritors if you want to call them that dressed appropriate I suppose um, just kind of a sea of black and little dots of white, obviously. And then American flag, this kind of thing here. And the thing that's interesting about this little gazebo looking thing is it looks a lot like some of the water temples in California, but that's a whole other subject. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, I have a video about water temple. Uh, so anyways, I thought that was interesting. So the, too bad that this photo is not higher resolution. And then we have a more grand fountain here in the center. Uh, we have various exhibitions, 
This building's pretty big, it's pretty interesting, just how tall it is and so forth. And then I suppose this is the hill from the previous image, although we don't see the uh, building, but it could be over here. Anyways, and then we see some other stuff over there, over here. Right, moving on. Here we have some girls standing by a very ornate fountain. And then the interesting thing is, is that some of you might kind of notice the resemblance between these girls, especially, I guess, this one, as to the image that I use for Old Scary World. See, th this one, like if you took this one and this one kind of switched them around, it look a lot like the girl that's standing out in front of the cliff house that I use for my profile image on YouTube and Instagram. And then the other thing about the fountain is these figures here. Almost like this one looks almost like it's an agony. Like it's being stretched out over this, uh, I don't know what you call a globe or this orb. And this guy is just barely hanging on. And then you just see all these figures, all these people, all these humans, just climbing their way to the top here. And this one looks like a cherub or some type of humanoid angel, not what angels actually look like. <clears throat> but, you know, the uh, romanticized kind of version of angels, like a, a seraphim or something like that. Anyways, uh, or cherub, I suppose. And then this one looks rather grotesque. Uh, I don't know if that's just because of the resolution of the image or if that's the way that it's supposed to look, but it almost looks kind of grotesque. It almost looks kind of demonic or monstrous, you know. Anyways, so that's that. Never seen these before. And then they got the fish man here, uh, with the big fish mouth, like a big mouth bass, like the the ones you put on the wall and press the button and sing songs. Um, yeah, just a really interesting fountain. Never seen it before. Who knows what happened to it? I guess it was, uh, you know, destroyed for some reason after the uh, exhibition was over. Um, so yeah, so that's that. And then uh, there's something back here that we can't quite get a full view of, but, you know, some other statue or something like that. So, yeah. And then, of course, you know, just like every other exhibition, every other World's Fair, there's a bunch of overgrowth for some reason. They didn't think that it was necessary to do proper landscaping. And also, they were just apparently just building around things that were already there. So, that makes sense. Oh, and there's another statue here flanking the other one. So... And it's kind of weird how she's off all on her own. She's looking over here at these two. And, yeah, I mean, it's a nice picture, you know. It's, uh, obviously, this is the subject. These three girls just happen to be in it. But regardless, and then I have here, we have some exhibition souvenir admission tickets, something like that. And then we have one, two, three, four, five different ones. And then uh, here's the seal, California seal, which is also known as the Eureka seal. As, uh, you know, a reference to Eureka, I found it, which is supposedly what the uh, settlers said when they discovered California was Eureka. I found it, uh, which is kind of strange in itself, but that's a whole other story. And then we got kind of this generic gold miner kind of looking dude, you know. And then uh, this uh, friar looking dude, like maybe supposed to be connected to one of the California missions or churches at the time. Right. So that's it. I mean, just basically something that one of the visitors would get as a, as a souvenir, as a trinket. So it says, 
July 4th, 1894. This one's January. Those are January. Oh, January 2, July. Okay. This one just says July there. So that one's a little bit different. See, this one's still got the stub. So, okay, that's the difference. That's why it's a little bit bigger. All right. But then at the same time, there's, they're just different in general. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. This one says California Midwinter International Exposition. Oh no, they're all the same. Just the design's different. All right. And then for some reason, this is the construction photos. In other words, these are the only images here in this collage, but they're not photographs, they're drawings. But I couldn't find any photographs of the groundbreak. This is supposed to be the groundbreaking ceremony. You see the timber and you see the tracks laid out for the horses and then you see all the horses like, like what are these things like? The ones that built it? No. These are you know, people here to see the groundbreaking ceremony. Seems like this many people, you know, kind of get in the way, but regardless, I think it's a little strange that there was no photographs of the groundbreaking ceremony. Just this, this drawing, and then this guy's twisting his mustache like he knows what's going on, you know. Trying lies. This guy looking pretty suspicious. And, I mean, they're all pretty suspicious to me, but this guy with his beard, and this little boy's asking a question, asking his mom for a dollar or something. I don't know. Anyways, the point is, is this is this is it. This is the proof of it being constructed, a drawing, or I suppose a series of drawings. Got the American flag and then maybe the French flag or something, whatever that has to do with anything. And you just got these people, you know, trompsing around in the mud and dirt and some stacks of wood, not nearly enough to build anything of any substance, but you know, whatever. And then here's a night shot and a day shot. And of course, electricity was relatively new magical ability at the time so they must have been pumping a lot of watts you know a lot of amperage into this particular part of san francisco at the time golden gate park so where the energy was coming from who knows what substation or generation plant that they had going on i have no idea but regardless the place is lit up like a christmas tree and then I suppose these are supposed to be the stars or something because it's like a long exposure photograph and that's why there's some people. Yeah. So regardless, it's an interesting image. You know, these giant orbs of light and every window in the place is lit up. And then you got your antiquitech here. I mean, that's where the energy is coming from. There's a lot of them, so maybe it's enough. And then of course, this is a temporary structure built out of plywood and paper mache and plaster of Paris or some, whatever the hell they tell us. All right, next one. Kind of the same. Oh, is that the same? Yeah, that's the same building, but in the daytime and then you got a bunch of people, big, big, big crowd of people here. And then what's really weird is they're holding, a lot of these people seem to be holding the same thing like a flagpole or a bayonet or maybe it was some type of souvenir that they were, I don't know what it's supposed to be, but there's something going on here. There's a line and then these people, oh yeah, I think they are the rifle. I think they are the bayonets and these are like soldiers, like union soldiers. Something like that. Moving on. 
So I thought this was pretty cool. This is a little mysterious. This guy looking out here at the arch going on. So that's pretty cool. And then it's got kind of a weird tone to it. I'm sure this is necessarily the intended color tone, but regardless, we got you know information in it. We can see the Ferris wheel here in the distance. And yeah, it's, just, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool image. This definitely adds an element of mystery, just the way the guy's observing it. It's like, where's everybody else? And yeah, you could say it was early, or it was this, or it was that. There's always some logical explanation. But regardless, it seems to be pretty sparsely populated at the time that this photo was taken. So there's that. And the next image. Here we have another kind of overview. And we have this kind of dirt road. Uh, looks like there's a buggy and there's these perfectly laid tracks of previous vehicles I suppose they all just managed to stay in the exact same lane but I don't know and then we got some other people over here big fence and then the other thing that's interesting about this image is this looks like it's worn down already not like it's not finished because it's so randomly you know, these little random bald spots kind of these little and then everything else is built out everything else looks done and then this dome here just randomly has all this damage so that's a little weird and then in the background I have the cross now I'm not sure I'm not completely positive but this might be Mount Davidson which is where this cross if it is Mount Davidson which is where this cross still stands but it's covered in a forest now so like this is completely barren this is completely bald but now if this is the mountain that I think it is there's actually a lot of uh, vegetation trees and so forth if that is what I think it is. So, and then also we have this opportunity, and you have to remember that this is before the great earthquake in 1906. This is supposed to be 1894. So we can see how built it out it is. And this, is, this isn't downtown, this is actually facing the other way, I believe. So this isn't even where the skyscrapers are, where the big buildings would have been. This is just, outlying neighborhoods and you can already see how built out it is in 1894 so that's cool you know that you get to see that vantage point now I don't know what direction exactly it's facing but I'm pretty sure it's not facing the bay so in other words it's not facing downtown San Francisco but I could be wrong I'm not necessarily an expert but that's just what my intuition is telling me. And then here we have a pyramid top, of course, why not? Just, uh, like I said, I had never seen this exhibition before, never even heard of it. If anybody has, let me know in the comments if you know more about it. And speaking of pyramids, we have another Egyptian, I guess, exhibition. Never seen this one before. And you got the sphinxes, and then these sphinxes look a lot like the sphinxes on Leyland Stanford's mausoleum. Uh, I did a video about that, where these sphinxes are similar sphinxes are flanking his tomb. And he was a man of this era, of the late 1800s, so he was probably there. There's probably some connection. Also, his tomb has palm trees uh, just to kind of create a more Egyptian kind of vibe. I guess that would be why those are there. All right. So, yeah, and then we got the, the winged birds there, the phoenix or whatever it's supposed to symbolize. It's supposed to be like a... Originally, I believe it was a Phoenician 
symbol of life and eternal life and all that. And got co-opted by the uh, Egyptians and so forth. And we got some hieroglyphics. So that's all there is with that. And then of course what exhibition would be complete without uh, bear tamers, uh, creepy guys here standing at podium, and then you got uh, Giggles the Clown back here, and you got the inheritor looking dudes with the hats and all that. some dogs because of course when you go to a exhibition when you go to a world's fair type uh, event that's what you want you want you know bears just hanging out you get the band up here yeah this is an interesting one once again haven't seen it before so I don't know what the deal is but these two guys like this dude and this dude in particular are probably the most sinister of the bunch. And this guy just looks like angry. You know, he just looks like a little perturbed. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah. Everybody just looks bizarre back then. So maybe that's normal, I guess, technically. Or something. I don't know. And then we have this one here with the big spotlight, this kind of mock Eiffel Tower looking thing. But think about how much wattage this is putting out to shine all the way down here on this cross here. So that's cool. But once again, how much electricity was being used and it was like a big deal at the time, you know, lights and all that. So it was kind of part of the exhibition was showing off how much power they could put out and produce and how many light bulbs they could install and all that kind of stuff. That's actually supposedly part of the whole thing was because you got to remember at this time, most people's homes weren't wired for electricity. So this might have been the first time that certain people even saw electricity. So yeah, so let's see. And then we got this one here, this big building here that's, you know, temporary. I, I just don't see it. I mean, I guess it's possible, but to me, it seems like a lot of work for something that's just gonna get torn down anyways. But obviously some people speculate that going by the official narrative that it was just a big, you know, I don't know what you would say, kind of just bragging that they could, you know, just tear it down like it was no big deal. But I don't think everything got destroyed. That doesn't make any sense. The statues, some of those fountains and so forth, there'd be no point to completely destroy them. So regardless of the timeline or what how old these actually are, either way, it's really bizarre. I mean, even with the official story, it's just, it's kind of a weird phenomena that occurred at that time period, especially the way that they built the buildings. It's just, it's weird. Either way, it's weird, and either way, it's worth investigating, regardless of what the truth is. It's just still strange that they were able to pull this off and then just tear it all down. Uh, it's, it's weird, either way. So here's another overview. And then the other thing about this photo, like the other aerial, is you can kind of see what's going on around this isn't obviously part of the exhibition. This is San Francisco here. And this was from a book and somebody scanned it because you can see the staples and you can see the holes in the paper. And you're like, this is a fold in the book. But once again, I've never seen this picture of San Francisco before. Uh, as far as this picture of the exhibition in San Francisco. But what's interesting, once again, as you can see, kind of what was going on in the outlying areas over here. I got some houses and things like that. And this is 1894, like I said. 
So they were still rocking and rolling for another uh, 12 years before the earthquake. So you can imagine what 12 more years would have looked like before the earthquake. And then they were able to rebuild back even more than before the earthquake in a matter of, I don't know, was it five, six years at the most, and it was built even up, even bigger, supposedly. But I mean, this statue here must be pretty large to be able to be that big from that distance. And when I zoom in here, it's, see it, but you can see, I mean, it must be pretty gigantic to be able to be that big in the frame there. So, and then there's that track again, that's going this way. You can see a little bit more of what's going on over here. And that's about it. So, like I said, didn't know about this exhibition and I just wanted to do a quick video and I apologize that this icon here is in the corner the whole time. I just realized that, so I apologize for that. Hopefully it didn't get in the way too much or wasn't too much of a distraction, but that's the way it goes sometimes. They can't all be zingers. All right, once again, thanks for watching. Goodbye.